Hello there. Well, there's been a very interesting video that's been uploaded to JW Broadcasting and it's of a morning worship lecture. Uh, for those who don't know what morning worship is, it's the it's basically the speech that's given at the beginning of every day in, dis in discussing the day's text. And Watchtower is putting some selected lectures on JW Broadcast, usually of governing body members or governing body helpers. And um, an eagle-eyed person on Facebook has spotted this extraordinary uh, speech by um, Stephen Lett on the theme, Maintain the Oneness of the Spirit. And I started listening to it and it was already an extraordinary speech before we got to the bit that I really want to talk about because it was very Orwellian in nature. It was talking about obviously oneness and unity and the importance of, um, of everybody being on the same level. And uh, Stephen Letts said that if, if we, we would be elevated from this level if we think too much of ourselves and you can't help but watch a member of the governing body say that with his pinky ring on who is you know in front of the camera so much and you know flying around the world to be guest of honor at these international conventions and what have you and thinking well are you not thinking a little bit too much of yourself are, you, are your colleagues you know the governing body not thinking a little bit too much of themselves apparently it's one rule for them and another rule for everybody else in the organization and there was another really disturbing part of his speech where he, he talked about personal rights um, he said we're willing uh, if if we're contributing towards oneness he said we're willing to forego our so-called personal rights in order to pursue or advance oneness now to illustrate this a person who thinks too much of himself he might think well it's my hair my clothes I have the right to dress or groom any way I want to I don't care who likes it well that may be true but what does 1 Corinthians 10, 23 say? It says, all things are lawful, but not all things are advantageous. So, yes, it may be your personal right to decide how you have your hair, whether you have a beard or not, uh, how you dress. But uh, is it advantageous? And by advantageous, do we mean does it conform to uh, the governing body's um, maze of laws and policies? So really intriguing Orwellian uh, discussion um, about you know demanding that everybody fall in line with with what the organisation requires of them you know even if it means foregoing their personal rights. But that was nothing compared to what he said on the issue of child abuse. Another way we can contribute to the oneness: rejecting false stories that are designed to separate us from Jehovah's organisation. As an example, think about the apostate-driven lies and dishonesties that Jehovah's organization is permissive toward pedophiles. I mean, that is ridiculous, isn't it? If anybody takes action against someone who would threaten our young ones and takes action to protect our young ones, it's Jehovah's organization. We reject outright such lies. What a remarkable rant against <laughs> against the the pressure that's now being brought to bear on Watchtower for their mishandling of child abuse. Um, there's a few things to say about this. Um, hopefully you've noticed the straw man that's lurking inside this argument. When I say uh, straw man, I obviously mean that one thing, one way of arguing, if you if you want to kind of undermine your opponent, is to misrepresent what their argument is, so that it's easier to break it down. So what you do is you present um, a, a slightly skewed or uh, or a misinterpretation of what their argument is that's easier to to burn down, as it were. Hence the the the, the straw man uh, name. But what Stephen that does here is he says that. The apostates say that Jehovah's organization, Watchtower, is permissive towards pedophiles. Now that isn't necessarily what apostates actually say. Um, people like myself, activists against Watchtower, he can call us apostates if he wants. We are apostates if we've left, as I've said in another video, but anyway. Um, what 
what activists like myself are saying is that if you put policies in place that make it possible for pedophiles to abuse children without any kind of intervention from the authorities, then rather than protecting children, you're actually protecting, protecting pedophiles. Now, hopefully I don't need to explain the difference between protecting something and being permissive towards something. So if Watchtower was permissive, permissive towards pedophiles, it would be printing in its literature that it's okay to be a pedophile, more people should be pedophiles, pedophiles are, are receiving un unwarranted um, criticism, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to be a pedophile. That would be being permissive towards pedophiles, saying that there's nothing wrong with child molestation. That isn't what Watchtower say, and that's not what activists like myself are saying about Watchtower. We're not saying that Watchtower is being permissive about pedophiles, we're saying it's, be, it's protecting pedophiles. It has policies in place that protect pedophiles rather than protecting children. The other incredible thing that Stephen Lett talks about in this incredibly brief rant against child abuse, I, I wish in fact that he would you know, speak more on child abuse so we can really get into the mind of what the governing body have to say on this uh, subject. Um, but he says, if anybody takes action against someone who would threaten our young ones and takes action to protect our young ones, it's Jehovah's organization. Well, this is entirely contradicted when you look not only at Watchtower directions to elders, uh, but also, and not only the way that Watchtower is instructing elders regarding um, keeping tabs on, on pedophiles, but when you look at what Watchtower representatives have themselves said in court when under question about what their role is in protecting young ones. And to drive home this point, I'm going to show you a brief clip from uh, Trey Bundy's excellent PBS documentary on child abuse in Jehovah's Witnesses. In one of the dozen lawsuits I've been following, Watchtower supervisor Richard Ash was asked if the organization has a responsibility to protect children from abuse. But within the congregation, ours is a spiritual protection. When we're talking about physical protection, that's up to the secular authorities to provide. And so he was asked about the Watchtower's Bible-based directives to keep child abuse cases confidential. It states in paragraph three, mm -hmm. there is a time to keep quiet when your words should prove to be few. Do you see that? Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Joseph. I object Joker. to that it's a violation of the First Amendment, freedom of religion, freedom of association. So Richard Ash, the Watchtower representative, basically says, it, look, it's not our responsibility to give physical protection, to physically separate young ones from pedophiles. Ours is a spiritual protection. You know, we will, we will disfellowship a pedophile if there are the two witnesses in place uh, to, the, to the wrongdoing. You know, apart, aside, from, aside from that, you know, we don't have any responsibility at all towards the physical protection of our young ones. And, that and that's what Watchtower has said in court, and it completely contradicts what Stephen Lett has said. Uh, another really interesting aspect of Trey Bundy's recent investigation, which completely contradicts Stephen Lett's words, remember he's saying that um, Jehovah's organization is superb at protecting um, young ones who would threaten them. Uh, he did a fantastic interview on the Huffington Post regarding the Jose Lopez case. And remember, if this, you know, it's worth saying at this point that if the whole issue with child abuse was, was lies, was apostate driven lies and dishonesty, as Stephen says, then why, why have there been multi million pound judgments against Watchtower? How was Candace Conte, Conte able to get her, I think, 15 million judgment against Watchtower? How was Jose Lopez able to get his $13.5 million judgment against Watchtower? If this is all just fabrication from apostates, there has to be some substance to it if courts of law are punishing Watchtower so unequivocally for their negligence in this area. But in, in particular regarding the Jose Lopez case, listen to what Trey Bundy has to say about, what, about the way Watchtower behaved during that case. Uh, and talk to us, you know, I, I don't know if we have time to go into some of the specific cases, but maybe we'll just bring up uh, Jose Lopez. Uh, 
uh, that's what we have time for now. He was molested when he was seven years old by a Jehovah's Witness congregant in San Diego. And a judge awarded him $13.5 million when his case against the witnesses concluded in October. Uh, but, you know, how in particular was this lawsuit really able to shed light on the religion's database of predators? This was a really important suit. And, and one of the reasons is because it, it resulted in, in what looks like a really rare admission. You had a Watchtower official testifying in the case that since 1997, they've directed all bodies of elders across the United States to report to the Watchtower any known child abusers. The Watchtower has been gathering this information for almost 20 years now, and, and the information is very detailed. It's who's, who, what's the person's name? How old was the victim? Uh, does anybody else know about this? So uh, Erwin Zalkin, the attorney for Jose Lopez in San Diego, subpoenaed this, this database. The Watchtower official, a man named Richard Ash, said that the, there was so much information, and it was mixed up in so many millions of documents and so many, uh, more than 14,000 uh, computer files, that it would take years for them to produce that information, to extract the data on all, all they know about child sex abusers. Uh, Zalkin brought in a software expert who testified they should be able to do it in less than two months. And at that point, the Watchtower essentially said, we're not going to provide this. Uh, as a result, the judge uh, threw the Watchtower's defense out of court and uh, issued a default judgment, uh, $13.5 million. Well, certainly uh, incredibly, incredibly disturbing stuff. Trey, thank you for joining us today. So let's remind ourselves of Stephen Lett's claim here. Stephen Lett is saying that Jehovah's Organization will do anything it takes to protect young Jehovah's Witnesses. And yet we know, we absolutely know, that in 1997, Watchtower ordered all congregations to send in details of child molesters in their congregation. And, and recorded, tabulated that information. And then when asked in a very recent lawsuit, uh, when, well, they weren't just asked, it was subpoenaed. That, that information that they'd gathered was subpoenaed. And they said, oh, well, you know, it would take way too long for us to find all that information. And then a software expert says, actually, it, should, it shouldn't take more than two months. And at that point, they say, well, actually, we're just not going to give it to you. You know, what are you gonna do? Um, and they lose, they're willing to lose the case on, on that. It, that. That wasn't the only reason they lost the case, by the way. They also lost the case because Garrett Loesch refused, as I've said in another video, he refused to appear before the court when asked to defend this, this apparently bulletproof uh, child abuse policy that Watchtower has. Refused to defend it completely in a court of law. So... You know, put all of this together and what we have is an organisation who knows where thousands of pedophiles are, knows that they are in congregations and won't, won't let the authorities do their job of dealing with them. How is this protecting? How is this protecting young ones within Jehovah's Witnesses? Uh, I really do hope that Jehovah's Witnesses who, who might perhaps stumble on this video will be prompted to investigate to make sure it's not just what I'm saying. Don't just take my word for it. Go on Google for goodness sake. You know, Trey Bundy is not an apostate. Trey Bundy is an investigative reporter. And he knows full well that he would get into a whole lot of trouble if he reported things that weren't true. If he made up lies about what Tower has or hadn't, hasn't said in court. Trey Bundy has no horse in that race. All he wants to, in, in you know, defaming Watchtower for religious reasons, all he wants to do is report on what's really happening. And an investigative reporter has turned his eye over many months to what's going on in Watchtower regarding child abuse. And you heard the interviewer who was interviewing him in that last clip say that it was very, very disturbing. It is disturbing. It's not just disturbing to so-called apostates, it's disturbing to outsiders who look in on the religion, on Jehovah's Witnesses, and see so many children who are endangered by such you know, patently ridiculous policies. So um, yeah, I find it intriguing that Stephen Lett has, has broached this subject, albeit so, um, so briefly and without really saying anything in, in, in their defence other than to just make a blanket denial. I think it will be interesting as, because I get the impression that, that the Trey Bundy report is just the, just 
the beginning of of like um, of in, of more intense media scrutiny on this issue. So it will be interesting to see, you know, whether we get more of these sorts of videos, you know, because Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going to be, you know, they're going to be getting the flack from this. They're going to be seeing it on their television screens, or they're going to be confronted with it by people who, you know, who take an interest in this sort of thing when they're doing their ministry. And you know it's just not going to go away. So it'll be interesting to see whether we get more of these sorts of, you know, um, denial videos from Watchtower, you know, in the next few months and years. Anyway, those are just my thoughts on the Stephen Lett video. As I said, if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this video and you want to know, find out more about, you know, the issues that make the whole mishandling of child abuse such a big issue for Jehovah's Witnesses, that the to witness rule all of the various different nuances of their policies then please do research on it that's what google's there for and uh, you know by all means check up all of the references that are given make sure that if a body of letters elder is quoted that you find that body of elders letter and see for yourself where watchtower is giving these policies so i hope this video has been interesting and thank you for watching